So here's the thing. So, you know, being you're asking kind of a broad question, um, Samsung. Samsung, in my opinion, just for everybody out there that's listening to this and answer your question, not a lot of people want to buy Samsung phones. Um, the problem is, is so there really isn't a high demand for Samsung overseas because of the fact that you can get genuine Samsung cards. The reason why iPhones are so expensive and they're so high demand, even if they're black or there's problems with them, is because of the fact that, you know, Apple has lock down the parts to the point where you know, it's almost impossible to be approved as an Apple approved repair store, etc. So Samsung's just Samsung's just don't have the same kind of resale value as an iPhone. And you'll also notice so when like brand new Samsung's come out, like the Note 10 or Note 10 Plus, etc., they'll drop a hundred to hundred and fifty dollars within a few months where iPhones will pretty much stay, stay the same price. The yeah, they stay pretty high. Exactly. iPhones will stay the same price relatively even up until the next launch. So it's kind of crazy, but mm -hmm. galaxies are hard. In, in my opinion on galaxies, uh, just make sure that you give yourself plenty of room as far as yeah. what you pay and what you can sell it for. Cause sometimes they just don't sell. I think, uh, I mean, I, I paid, I paid 260. Yeah. You should have some room on that then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Have some. Well, hey, everybody, we're going to be uh, officially starting the group chat now. So I'm going to mute everybody for anybody that's new to the group chats. Uh, if you have a question, use the raise hand button in the group chat or type in chat for what you want to type. Otherwise, you know, we get a bunch of reverb and echo. So uh, in tonight's group chat, we're going to be talking about the new iPhone release. And I kind of want to see what everybody thinks of the new iPhone. I want to see if everybody thinks it's going to be a hit. Um, you know, type in the chat, see if you guys got any input. Would love to hear from everybody here tonight in the chat. But a lot of people have been wondering, you know, what are we supposed to do in the meantime while the new iPhone is in the process of launching? So the new iPhone for obviously anybody who hasn't been doing the research, it's going to be, I think, a it's going to be a little wave. It's going to make a little wave in the uh, industry. Welcome, Josh. Because of the fact that the iPhone 11 Pro is actually going to finally have a new camera. Like, they're actually changing something about the body. Although I personally think that it's kind of visually ugly if the camera does what it's supposed to do. If it's an amazing camera and there's a big difference, I think the uh, fan base or the consumer base, the people who buy it, the consumers, are going to absolutely love it. And I think that it is going to sell out really fast. Now, what this means for us is any iPhones that are coming in right now, they're dirt cheap. I've got five iPhone XS's uh, sitting basically out right now in my living room I purchased last week. I think I paid like 300 bucks a piece for them. Or actually, it's five XS Maxes and one iPhone XS. I paid 300 for the XS, 350 each for an iPhone XS Max. And these are brand new phones. I mean, we're talking brand new sealed phones. Okay, brand new, sealed, and then new open. They're all locked, so it really doesn't matter whether it's sealed or open. But they're brand new phones. And I mean, paying $350 for, you know, a potentially a $1,000 or $1,100 phone, that's kind of a hard sell sometimes to the customers. So we want to talk about that today. Just want to see how everybody's doing with the new release coming up. Like, how has everybody been doing? Um, if you guys have been having issues with that, let's talk about it tonight. Let's talk about how to close people, how to explain stuff to people that, hey, you know, the new iPhone is coming out and this is why we can pay X amount. This is why we have to offer less because of the fact that the new iPhone is coming out. And when the new iPhone comes out, obviously prices drop. They drop drastically and you can't really predict where prices are going to stabilize at until the new iPhone actually comes out and how much of a market wave or market crash you know, it's going to happen until the new iPhone actually comes out. So, hey, Luke, I actually have a, a question on the opposite spectrum. So, we're talking about the newest phones. Um, how bad of a price crash do you think a five hundred ninety nine dollar XR is going to have when it's you can get a brand new iPhone XR for six hundred bucks? I mean, that sounds extremely cheap to me. You know, I think the iPhone XR is going to have a really big price crash. Um, and the problem, the problem being is. So for everybody out there that's been an Apple fan, or obviously if you've been phone flipping for a while, I don't have a sheet in front of me, but to the best of my recollection, my memory, Apple has never released a phone. Like in the past 10 years, Apple has not released a phone that has been cheaper at launch than the exact same similar model as the previous year. So obviously Apple has come out with like the iPhone SE, which might have been cheaper than the iPhone 6 at launch or the iPhone 6S just because of the fact that that's how they designed it. But 
the iPhone 11 or the iPhone Pro, the iPhone 11 Pro is starting at uh, 599 guys. So it's actually a new model. It's better. It's faster uh, than the iPhone XR. That's the 10R. That's 599. The, the, the 11 is 699, but I see your point. It's just the price really didn't go up this launch. And so I think that that's the problem is that when you have a new phone that's launching, and the price is either the same or lower than last year's model. And the iPhone XR, in my opinion, it didn't really seem like it did very well because of the fact that prices have been very low for the XR. I think that the XR is going to see a large price drop. And honestly, I can't say how much, but I would expect a $100 to $150 drop on the iPhone XR. I, I think that the iPhone the XR... Below the $599? Yeah, I, I would say so. Or are you are you talking about retail or are you talking about uh, Well no cost? I'm talk I'm talking about retail. So before retail on the XR was seven forty nine. At the launch they dropped the price of the ten R to five ninety nine brand new at any carrier. And that's what I think has a huge impact on used iPhone prices. And the same way that the, the S E did not at first but later, where people are gonna second guess buying a used phone when they can buy a brand new phone for five ninety nine, that's an XR, you know, why are they going to go spend, I mean, you look at eBay prices right now and an XR on lock, what are they going for? I don't do eBay anymore, but it's close to closer to the 500 mark. Right. Like about I, I think that the, I think that the iPhone XR after the, after the pros come out and you know, all this new release happens, I think the XR as far as actual retail price, I think they might drop it by a hundred dollars. I could see that. I would say a hundred bucks. Um, Down to five hundred. I would say yeah, four ninety nine. Um, just because of the fact that I don't think anybody's gonna buy an iPhone XR when you can get a newer model for the same price. Basically, there's there's no yeah. reason. You know why? You know, just think about this. It's just simplicity wise. If you guys were out shopping for cars and you could buy a car with a uh, turbo for the same price and it's the exact same car all the way around, why would you ever buy the base model for the same price? Why would you even look at exactly. it? Exactly. Well, what I'm looking at is not, not the new phone price as much as I'm wondering how the used, unlocked domestic market is going to react to being able to get a brand new phone for $5.99. Or even if it drops to $4.99, that's even worse. When you can buy a brand new phone for 500 bucks from any store, how think, do you think that's going to affect the used market locally? I think that the used market will still be the same. Um, in my opinion, the used market, especially on the consumer side of things, I don't think it's as educated as people are online, especially as flippers. I mean, most of the people that you're selling to local, they're not flippers. They're just people who are average consumers. Um, yeah. And then also, you know, people do pay attention to the fact that, okay, the iPhone Pro might be $599, but then, you know, there's the there's the max and there's this and that there's obviously always going to be that people are going to acknowledge when something is, you know, a thousand dollars retail. So I don't really think it'll have much effect on the overall market, but I just think okay. that the model coming out, that's going to be basically the same price as an XR. I think it's going to kind of ruin the market for the XR. And I think it's going to ruin resale prices for it also. I mean, obviously you're still be able to resell it, but I just think that it's going to tank. I think that the, yeah. the, mar the market on the XR is going to go way down, but I still think the use and unlock market will be fine. Um, you know, okay. everything, everything will scale appropriately. Um, but you know, it is going to be kind of interesting just basically noticing that the iPhones really aren't going up in price with this release. And I think that that's going to be the biggest factor in the market is just the fact that the price on the iPhone really isn't going up. And this is the first time in basically almost a decade, I want to say that the new iPhones are releasing in November as they do every year, but prices are not going up. Typically, every year, if you guys have noticed, iPhone 7 Plus, when the iPhone 8 Plus came out, prices went up like $100 to $150, et cetera, based on the gigabyte size. And basically, this year, there's no price increases, and I think that is going to cause problems. I don't think it's going to affect us real bad, but it's just going to be interesting. So yeah. I advise everyone to be careful as the new iPhones launch. I mean, today is, uh, looks like it's the 15th or the 16th today. So... Just, just be advised. Be advised to, uh, you know, buy your phones, but buy them low. So, welcome, David. 
So just make sure you guys are not paying very much for the phones. I mean, if, if you guys are selling to a direct buyer, try and buy the phones for a hundred bucks off or 150 bucks off. You guys want to make sure that you. Well, so like, let, let me give you an example. Cause this is actually a deal I turned down to it. a week ago would have been a great deal. So uh, a sprint 64 batty SN XR, you know, I turned that down at 200 bucks. Like, was that really – because, like, I just feel like the market's going to tank even more on those, you know? And that was a used XR? Yeah, used Sprint Bad ESN. The, my thought process was, you know, yeah, I can make 50 to 80 bucks to a direct buyer. But I just don't see the margin at anything. I was trying to get it just a little bit lower because I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, you know, a brand new sealed in the box unlocked XR – at Best Buy, it's five ninety nine. At most, at most, I mean, I would say three hundred bucks for that. At most, so yeah, and see, you, might, you might have shorted yourself years. money, but at the same time, you know, you would have made forty, fifty bucks. Maybe you took a gamble on well, you know, find a better deal. You know, in the meantime, whatever. But no, I don't really think you lost a ton of money there. I mean, it, well, you best, see, my concern, my concern wasn't that I wouldn't make money now. Because right now, yes, you're right. I would make fifty, sixty bucks. My concern was that, you know, if I bought it today, um, which I did, you know, if I bought it today and it doesn't sell for three days, the new iPhones launch, you know, and the market tanks, there's not much room for tanking right there. You know, when you're only making 40, 50 bucks margin and the market tanks by 60, 70, 80 bucks on those Sprint Locks XRs, you know what I mean? That was just my concern there. Yeah, that's, uh, you know... What I would do if you guys are going to be buying iPhones this week and you're worried about prices tanking, um, don't buy them unless you're going to be able to overnight ship them or you can work with a direct buyer that's going to overnight ship them and not deduct if the prices drop. And obviously, if you have a single phone, most direct buyers are not going to want to pay for overnight shipping. Yeah, so exactly. If you guys are going to buy phones, make sure you can package them up with something you got sitting around or make sure you guys buy multiple phones or try and get a couple deals lined up before you dive in. If not, just buy very safely. I mean, if you pay $150 for an iPhone XR, there's no way that you're not going to be able to sell that for parts and make your money back. But it could be yeah. scary. Like I said, we just kind of have to see what happens when the new iPhone launches November 3rd. I mean, we're basically two weeks away, so it should be interesting. So, but anyways, guys, um, anybody else have any questions about the new iPhones coming up? Um, if you guys do, just make sure you guys type in chat or raise your hand. Um, just kind of want to make sure everybody's prepared for the new iPhone launch too. One of the things you guys got to do to get ready for this is make sure you guys got plenty of cash sitting on hand. Um, you know, when the new iPhone comes out, you can expect late night deals. You can expect early morning deals, you know, deals that happen in between the hours of a bank where you'd be able to go and withdraw cash. So make sure you guys got plenty of cash on hand just because of the fact that, you know, it's going to be crazy when this iPhone drops, just because of the fact that they actually changed the camera, you can expect there to be a lot of hype behind it. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of business going on. So just, uh, just expect that not to mention all of your current suppliers that haven't been getting very good prices. This might be the major break. Maybe our SIM will get fixed. Maybe prices will go back up. So, But other than that, anybody having any problems tonight? Anybody have any questions about uh, just phone flipping in general or anybody experiencing anything with issues, customers, leads? So this is the time, guys, for us to talk about it. David, how have you been? Absolutely fabulous. How are you? Hey, that's good. Pretty good. How's phone flipping been? Uh, we're doing 12 a month. Um, I should say I am. Jessica's in transition with treatment. So I'll, uh, I haven't upgraded. I'm just steady keeping at a regular pace, doing a lot of McCurry. Sure. McCurry. Sure. No, that's good. Hey, holding steady is better than nothing. Yep. I'm looking forward to the transition uh, here in the next week or two. Out of I, um, I haven't been in the chats there for a couple of weeks, so uh, that's, that's pretty much the reason why. But anyway, busy, busy. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. I mean, that's that's totally understandable. I uh, I hope she gets well. Yeah. Uh, if she, you should be talking to her uh, probably this weekend. <laughs> sure. Well, let's hope so. Yeah, and then we'll be looking for the flight from there. Sounds good, David. Yeah. Cool. Oh, you're doing a lot of rental business, huh? 
Yeah, yeah, there's been a lot of rental stuff going on. So, yep, it's been crazy. It's that time of the year. It's summer. I got to get everything done before winter. So, I don't want to deal oh, okay. with it. Yeah, it's not very fun remodeling stuff or trying to get stuff done during the winter. I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. Hard, uh, hard cold, snowy weeks. Yep, definitely. Um, Yuri has a question. Yuri wants to talk about paid Craigslist ads. Yuri, I'm going to unmute you. What kind of questions you got about paid Craigslist ads? So I usually post um, free ads. I don't like paying for the ads. By the time I do pay for the ads, I pay you know, five bucks. And okay. I get really good results with just one or two ads. max. And I posted an ad the other day, Thursday, and it got flagged. I posted in the financial district and I posted, I buy phones, but I haven't seen anybody else post there. So I'm thinking, uh, did the algorithm change? Did I miss something? Like it's been a long time since I posted a paid, paid ad. So that's why I asked. Sure. Um, I have a question for you, Yuri. Are you on a computer right now or a desktop? Uh, my phone. Okay. Your phone. I was going to ask you to share your screen, but what I could do is I could, I could potentially uh, just look it up on my computer and I could share screen. So you said that you get away somehow with only posting one or two Craigslist ads. Mm hmm Okay. Wow. Where do you live again? What I want to do is I want to bring up your area's Craigslist on uh, group chat for everybody. And I want to try and find one of your ads. Um, let me see. I'll go to Brooklyn, New York. No, just hit New York. Just hit New York. Brooklyn. Well, I already typed it in because I typed fast. Brooklyn, New York, Craigslist. So I'm going to share my screen for everybody. I want to dive into this because we're going to talk about paid Craigslist ads and why it's important, but I still want to check out what Yuri's got going on here. All right. So everybody see my screen. Let me know that you can. Brooklyn right here. So we're in Brooklyn, New York. All right. So uh, I'm just going to type in cash for phones. Let's see what comes up. See if I can find you. All right, look at all these ads. Holy uh, cow. That right there, yeah, that's mine right there, the first and second one. <laughs> first and second one, that's hilarious. This guy's really trying, though. Look at all this competition. Actually, this guy wants gift cards. It's completely different, but interesting. Looks like somebody found my free YouTube video on gift cards. There's um, another guy that does it, but he does the Bronx, which I stay away from the Bronx because... Uh, Bronx is a bad hey, area, isn't it? Hell yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, so interesting. So you have two ads. So... My opinion, I mean, that's awesome that it's working for you, but, you know, you have an area that not everybody can get away with only two ads, and I'm going to tell you why. So, Brooklyn, New York, um, let's, let's, just, let's just take a look right here and look at Brooklyn, uh, New York's, uh, let's see. Let's I'm also close to um, Manhattan, too, like Lower East Side, so that's like... So, Brooklyn, New York population. So Brooklyn, New York has 2.5 million people. Not everybody lives in a city where there's 2.5 million people. So the reason why having two ads might work and not to mention their free ads is there are so many people posting on Craigslist in, in this area that it's really hard for Craigslist and their algorithms and anybody who monitors posts that may be marked as spam. It's really hard for them to flag ads when there's so many being posted. In fact, it might even be one of the areas where they really don't moderate it much because there's so much and that it would be too time consuming to have people personally moderate that. And even the algorithms might not be able to keep up just because of the fact that if they did enable all the same algorithms they did for this area, it's called independent algorithm, which basically means different areas might have different algorithms. They would flag everybody's posts and then Craigslist wouldn't be a hit in Brooklyn, New York. Nobody would be using it. So that's probably why your two ads are working. I uh, just wanted to look at your ads. They're not bad at all. Nice little pictures, nice phone number. But consider this. If you have these two ads and you're getting plenty of leads, ask yourself if you put up you know, three more free ads and then you also did five paid ads. Mm -hmm. How many more leads would you get? You, know, you would probably get a, more, you know, a lot more customers, correct? Correct. So that's what you got to ask yourself, I guess, when it comes to lead generation and paid Craigslist ads, I'm not saying that everybody has to post 15 to 20 ads like I do or have 30 ads when I really want to buy phones. You know, when I really want to buy phones, I'll have 30, 35 ads running. I'll spend, you know, a few hundred dollars on Craigslist ads, which might sound crazy to everybody out there, but you have to ask yourself how much do you want to make in a month? Do you want to make 2000 a month or you don't want to make 10 grand in a month, you know, or 15 grand? 
So if you're comfortable with only posting two ads and that's what works for you, then I say go for it. But the benefit to pay Craigslist ads is, is one guys, it's a tax deduction. And then two, if for some reason your paid Craigslist ad does get flagged, all of my Craigslist ads, I pay for with a credit card. And what I will do is if Craigslist flags one of my paid ads in less than 30 days, so I don't get the full 30 day ad spend for it, I will file a chargeback through my bank against Craigslist and I will get a refund every single time. And then I will continue to use the service. So a lot of my ads, sometimes they'll get flagged like 15 days in or 18 days in, might be competition, might just be random people. But what I will do is, is I will go and file a chargeback and then it's like, I'm at the bank anyways, you know, I might be there for other reasons. I tell them I need to file a chargeback. We get that going real quick. Sometimes it'll be a couple at once for Craigslist. I get all my money back. It goes right back to my card. So no harm, no foul, no expense. And I still got that paid advertising for 15 days. Now, I don't know why necessarily Craigslist bans paid ads other than the fact that maybe their algorithms aren't working correctly or it's competition. But just keep in mind that if you keep a good record of your paid ads, you can actually get them for free if you get banned. If not, the other plus side to paid ads here, just to answer your question, is the mm -hmm. fact that with paid ads, typically they don't get banned. I mean, they don't get banned as often as free ads. I've, I've had regular ads banned, but I, I did something wrong, like uh, posting a like bad ESN or something stupid, but I haven't really gotten anything like banned for free, but this is the first time I've gotten banned for paid ads, so I just figured it was weird. So I stopped posting paid, paid ones. So yeah, so what I would do with the paid ads, you said you got flagged for posting the paid ads, yes? Mm-hmm, financial review. And after you, after you did that, did you file a chargeback or did you ask for a refund from Craigslist? No. Okay. So what you should do is, is basically what I do, guys, after I post a paid Craigslist ad, every time it shows the receipt or the ID number after you hit pay, I just hit print screen and then I print it from my printer and just basically keep it in a file. And every month I do that. And then any kind of stuff that I have, I'll submit a charge back to the bank. And that pretty much, you know, keeps your advertising costs down. But if you're getting banned for paid ads, sometimes posting paid ads and financial services, if somebody sees it and it's nothing related at all to financial services, sometimes they'll get banned. One of my most popular ads that I've done everybody is I will go in the financial services section and I will just put do you need money? Sell your phone. Basically telling people like, hey, if you need fast cash, consider selling your phone and that I am willing to give you fast cash anytime, any day, and that we can meet in a public place and I will get you out of your situation. So basically, I'm offering a cash service, a fast cash service in exchange for phones to help people out of financial troubles. This is how I've worded my financial ads on Craigslist and I typically don't get them banned. Hmm. Does that help you out at all? Yes, it does. Awesome. Josh has a question. Josh says, hey, when you're done, I actually have a marketplace question. I'm wondering if anyone else is having the issue. Description doesn't appear. Problem is I do strategy where you post a phone for ridiculously cheap and put not selling, just looking to buy in the description. Okay, hey, Josh. Uh, could you share your screen by chance? Uh, I'm actually trying to, I'm just getting Marketplace to load up here. And then okay. I will screen share here. Let's go see where the screen share button. I have not had that issue yet, so I would have to yeah, see. The problem that I've been having is, I, you know what I'm talking about, where you uh, you post like, an iPhone X for 250 bucks, and in the description you say, hey, this phone actually isn't for sale. I'm only looking to buy smartphones, tablets, computers, that kind of stuff. And then it'll show up to the first few people. And then everyone will message me saying, is this still available? And I'll tell them, you know, no, it's not. Or like, I'm not looking to sell it. I'm just looking to buy. And, you know, obviously there's some user stupidity to factor in. Obviously some people are still going to message. But it's everyone. And then I started realizing that my description doesn't show up in the, um, like, in, in Marketplace. It just shows the actual ad. So let me see. Where's the oh, share screen? There we go. Okay, there we go. I'm sharing. Okay, so let me find one that I did that. This is one of them, right? So this iPhone X for 250 bucks. Now, this is how it shows up. So yeah, this is how it shows. Now you see right here it's showing the description, but it won't show it on other people sometimes. 
Interesting. Could you drop that marketplace link in chat and uh, we could all click on it. If everybody wants to help Josh out here in the group chat, drop that link for us and let's click it and see what happens. Okay, cool. How do I go back to... And it says it's viewed by 1,800 people, so it looks like the ad. Yeah, yeah people are seeing the ad. How do I... How do I get to chat from here? <laughs> uh, there should there uh, should be a little button that you can uh, click. Okay. There you go. All right. Okay, so I'm going to click your marketplace ad and see what happens. I will share my screen for everybody to see. So, okay, for me, uh, looking good. So I'm going to actually share my screen to show everybody. It is working. It is definitely working. So here's my screen. This is Josh's ad, iPhone X. iPhone X for sale in Dallas on Facebook Marketplace. Phone not for sale. We buy phones for cash. Message for quote. Yeah, looks good. Okay. And if I ask for details... Okay, it wants me to log in on Facebook. It made me log in on a separate browser, but yeah, I, th I think it's working. So okay, yeah, I was just I and I noticed that I didn't know if there was a correlation. So I know when I would message other people, I couldn't see their descriptions. Like maybe you. I think it might just been a Facebook that. bug. I guess I've never had that happen. Another thing you guys can try if you get bugs on Facebook is even though it sounds odd. Sometimes Google Chrome, for some reason, it just like, it acts up. Uh, you can try opening Marketplace in a different browser like Internet Explorer or Firefox, something like that. But that kind of sounds like just like a glitch. I don't think that's been an error. I guess that's the first time that I've actually heard of that. Actually, anyone? wait, hold on. I think I figured it out um, now that I think about it, now that you mentioned browsers. That only happens on my phone. So can someone, it's, it's, is anyone on their phone that can pull up that link? and see if they can see the description from mobile. I can pull it up on my phone. Actually, yeah, now that I think about it, because I don't use Facebook or Marketplace on my laptop that much, but when I do, I've never had that problem. Josh, if you would send me that link on Facebook quick, I will pull it up on my phone and see what happens. Yeah. All right, let me see here. Okay. There you go. See what we get. All right, everybody. So I'm going to click on Josh's marketplace link. Uh, yeah, looks fine to me. So I'm just going to show everybody here. I'm going to show everyone. Um, so here it is. Here's Josh's marketplace link. Just kind of want to show everyone. I know it's kind of hard to see. But if we scroll and then we scroll down, your description is right there. So yeah, it's all looking good. Okay, so so it, might, it might just have been a glitch with your phone. I mean, sometimes mobile browsers don't sync. I mean, things can happen, yeah. guys. So don't well, don't spooked all the time. It, it definitely can happen. So doesn't always mean that you're doing anything wrong. Sometimes Facebook, okay. even though Facebook's uh, pretty big and pretty awesome, uh, it can make mistakes too. So now, is that the only good strategy to really get stuff to stick in Marketplace? Or do you have any other ideas on how to get ads to stick in Marketplace? Honestly, the phone one's probably the best one just because it goes right under the algorithm. I mean, okay. you can uh, you can always implement all the strategies and all that we've talked about over the past year and a half for anybody out there wanting to post phones on Marketplace. But the reason why I like my strategy of basically posting a phone with your business card and then l pretending to list it for sale and then saying that you buy phones. The reason why I like that is there's no way for them to come out with an algorithm that says anybody who posts a phone for sale that says they're buying phones, we have to delete their post. It's very hard for them to de design something like that. That's going to flag a legitimate posting that has something for sale. So yeah. Um, does that kind of help you out, Josh? Yeah, definitely. Sweet. Uh, Will says he has a question. Hey, Luke, could I get some negotiation tips? Yeah, absolutely, Will. Let's talk. I'm going to unmute you right now. We can talk about uh, negotiations and kind of what you've been uh, having going on. Hey, Luke. How's it going? Hey, pretty good. Good. Yeah, so I've been getting a lot of leads, but I haven't really closed hardly any. Okay. Um, you know, I've been mostly getting almost all of my leads from the ads you were just talking about posting things and saying they're not actually well, everybody on for sale but um so i've been getting usually about like anywhere from 30 to 50 messages per day um and i haven't really i'm never closing any okay so, can yeah. you are you on a desktop by chance no i'm on my phone okay i was gonna say i was gonna have you share your screen and i would be more than happy to you know go over everything or go over some leads or whatever and just see if there's any way you know me and the group could try and help you or uh you know pick it off but 
let's uh let's try something you want to do like um you want to do like some role play on the phone like i'll be the customer or you be the customer and just kind of see what the group thinks yeah sure okay so what we're gonna do guys is called like a role play basically will i'm going to be the customer you have to try and close me so i'm going to basically call you pretend that i have a phone I want you to appraise this and everything, even if you got to put me on speaker or put the group chat on speakerphone, appraise this phone as you would actually buy it off of eBay. Do this legitimately. And what I want is I want David, Josh, and Yuri, and I want everyone, Nelson, I want everyone out there to grade this call. If there's anything you did awesome, highlight it when I call on you. If there's anything that he could have done better, highlight that also. So basically, Will, I'm going to say ring, ring. And when I do that, you're going to answer the phone as if I'm actually calling you just like you would to buy a phone from someone, okay? All right. Sounds good. All right. Are you ready? Yeah. All right. Ring, ring. Hello, this is Will Packard with Packard Electronic Buybacks. Do you have any electronics to sell? Yeah. See, I actually saw your ad on Craigslist and I had an iPhone XR for sale. Great. Is anything wrong with that? Uh, not that I know of. Um, I mean, it seems pretty decent. There's a small crack in the screen, but other than that, it's not too bad. Okay. And do you happen to know the storage size? Um, it is a, it's a 64 gigabyte. Great. So if you could just give me a minute, I'll get you a price. Sure. Okay, so I could do 150 for that. Uh, I can pay in cash uh, pretty much whenever you're available. Um, how does that sound to you? 150. I don't know, man. It's like a $600 phone. It's kind of low. Yeah. You know, I understand, but just, uh, you know, since it's been used and the new iPhone is coming out, that tends to lower the value a bit. And then also with the crack in the screen, uh, you know, that's kind of the most I can do at the moment. Hmm. 150, huh? Yeah. Uh, how about like 170 and you come to me? You know, I don't actually have a car, uh, but I could meet you downtown somewhere. Um, or I can get closer to somewhere else. Where are you located? Just downtown. Is there a place you normally meet at? Yeah, I could meet you. Do you know where the library is? Yes, I do. Great. I could meet you there and I could do 160. 160. All right, I'll do that. Uh, how long till you're there? So, uh, I can be there in 20 minutes. Uh, I would just need you to sign a bill of sale and show me a driver's license. Okay, sure. That's fine. Great. All right. So I'll be wearing a black hat uh, so you can recognize me and I'll be there in about 20 minutes. Sounds good. Thanks. Yep. Thank you. All right. So what everybody think of that roll call? What's, what's your thoughts? Anybody got any thoughts? Raise your hand or type in the chat and I'll call on you. Um, my initial thoughts are the call wasn't too bad. Um, I think that you could work on your smoothness, I guess, if that makes any sense. Um, the answer when you answered the phone that was professional i like the name i like how you answered the phone that was cool but i think that it could be a just a little uh a little more relaxed i guess it was really it sounded really really serious i guess and then there was an awkward pause basically when i asked you to you know ask you for a price or whatever there wasn't any small talk so I'm going to call on everybody and see what everybody else thinks in the chat. So I'm going to call on uh, Josh first and see what Josh thinks. Hey, so I wrote it out in the chat. But I'm going to kind of explain what I thought. So um, we're going to start here. So when you started off answering the phone, you know, what you were saying was good, but it's, it's too much. It's too much of a mouthful. Have you ever, have you ever called a store and like the cat or the person working at the, wherever they're answering the phone, they kind of just like shoot off and it's not like a big store. It's like, you know, some little, I don't know, let's say it's another iPhone repair shop and they kind of mumble off some big long name 
and you're just like, what the hell did you just say? You know, I so when I answer the phone, I answer either hello, hello, this is Josh, or thanks for calling any PA iPhone repair. How can I help you? You know, it's something like that rolls off the tongue real smoothly. Um, the second, this is your biggest mistake. You gave them a price without asking what carrier the phone is. You know, that could have been Sprint locked. It could have been Verizon unlocked. And you didn't ask him. That's a, that could be what makes or breaks your profit margin there. Um, the way you asked about the condition, it was, it was all right. Um, the only thing is I try to make it a little bit more open-ended. Um, I don't remember if Luke ever touched on this before. If he ever, I don't know where I got this idea from. But what I usually do is I ask them, well, you know, do you have any, are there any problems with the phone? Does that crack screen or does it have, you know, like, does it, does it turn on everything? And then I ask them, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how would you rate the phone? You know, is it 10 being perfect, brand new in the box, to, you know, one being it got run over by a bobcat? Like, what's the condition? Um, and the, the reason I do that is because it kind of forces them to realize that maybe it's not as perfect as they think it is. Um, when, then, then the biggest problem I had with the rest of it is that you just overall, you just seem very, you didn't seem like you were, I'm going to say buying your own bullshit because we're all kind of, you know, in a way we all kind of have to lie a little bit to kind of sell it, you know, tell them this is what it's worth. This is what the price is, but you have to, Luke, would you agree with me that you have, kind of have to believe what you're selling to the customer before they're going to believe it? Yeah, no, um, I don't want to, I don't want to grill Will too bad. I don't want him to walk out of here and, no, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to feel bad about that. I just, you know, I like to give people tips to improve, you know, but yeah, no, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for the tips. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, no, it's positive criticism. Well, it's, it's tough love, but no, I, I want you to get these leads. I want you to close them. And I think, yeah, what, what Josh said is very important. That is one thing that I noticed too, when I was on the phone is no, there was uh, there was no carrier. You never asked me the carrier. And you got to remember this. If you miss a detail, as Josh said, if you miss a detail, and let's just say it was bad ESN sprints or bad ESN CDMA lock, you're looking at a phone there that's probably worth 240 bucks. Now, if that phone is cracked, but it's unlocked, that phone's probably worth $350. And this is going off the top of my head. I'm not looking at eBay right now. But that's $350. So if you told them $150, you're going to lose that deal, not because you but because you priced it wrong okay you know not it probably wasn't even anything to do with the tone of your voice or anything but just the fact that it just wasn't priced right you know what I mean yeah and usually if I'm on the phone and I'm just trying to save time in the uh appraisal sure. I just appraise as sprint locked uh, right just generally because that's one of the lowest yeah if I find out that it's like if if it's like t-mobile or something when I meet them I generally just leave the price the same, but if it's like unlocked or something, then I'll tell them that I can raise the price and I always bring extra cash and stuff. So well, if, if I can, if I can chip in just for a second here, if you're, if you want to cut down the time on your calls, um, at least in my experience, the storage is a lot less relevant than the carrier. You know, the carrier is the biggest thing. The storage, 128 gigs maybe adds, what, 20 to $30 in most cases? What I would always do is appraise it as the lowest gigabyte. If you want to even, if you want to skip that question, just appraise it as the lowest gigabyte. Exactly. I don't even ask anymore. Okay. So, um, but yeah, no, other than that, well, I mean, yeah, it's all right. I mean, you're newer to this. You'll get it, man. We're going to get you there. I mean, I'll promise you that. But, you know, another, another thing is the flow. Now, let me ask you guys a question. This is going to be kind of a fun little, uh, fun little question here. Now, when you think of somebody who's got flow, when you think of somebody who's smooth, something that rolls off the tongue, somebody that would get something by you and you wouldn't even know what happened until it was too late, I'm going to give you two comparisons here. Now, this is, uh, we're not going to talk politics. I don't care who you think the best music artist is out there or anything, but just think of these two personality types. If somebody was going to sell you something, okay, if somebody was going to sell you a car or sell you a CD, let's just say a CD, okay, they're both trying to sell you their CD. Now, we all know Eminem is a great rapper. He's got great lyricists. He's got, you know, even if you don't like his music, he's very clever lyrically. He's very smart. He's very sharp. But if he was trying to sell you something, think of Eminem's personality type and then think of Snoop Dogg. Think of how Snoop Dogg's music is just calm, chill, smooth. If you guys have ever listened to either of the two artists, okay, and if you haven't listened to either of these two artists, think of two artists that you like. Think of one that kind of snaps on the track and then somebody else that's just like, very good lyrics, but it's just like, it's just smooth. Think of two different personality types like that. And then ask yourself, you know, who's going to sell more, you know, or who's going to close more? 
you know, in my opinion, just on personally, I don't even listen to Snoop Dogg that much, but just some of the skits that I've seen him on TV, he's got a very calm, kind of confident, but very soothing, almost smooth voice. I'd probably sell a lot of stuff if he was a salesman. So that's the kind of, you want to kind of have that smooth, confident vibe that kind of just flows through the conversation. Does that make sense, Will? Yeah, that does. So what we'll do now is we will do a phone call if you want. You can be the customer and then I will close you. If you want, we can even do the same phone. That way it's exactly the same and I'll show you how I would answer it. Okay, sure. So you can uh, hit me with the ring ring whenever you're ready. All right, uh, ring ring. Hello, this is Luke. I pay cash for smartphones and electronics. What can I do for you? Hey, I saw your ad on, uh, on Craigslist. I was just wondering if you could give me some money for my, uh, my iPhone. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of iPhone do you got? It's the uh, iPhone XR. Okay, awesome. And tell me a little bit about the XR. Have you had it for a while? Yeah, I've had it for a little under a year. Okay, awesome. A little under a year. And then is there anything wrong with it? Any cracks, dents, nicks, anything that's real noticeable? Not really. It's pretty good condition, uh, except for a little crack on the screen. But a little crack on the screen. Okay, so tell me about this crack. Is it, uh, it, does the screen have any like black dots or anything like that? Or is the screen fully colored still? No, it's all good. It's, it's just cracked. Okay, cool. And then uh, what kind of phone company is the phone for? I used it on T-Mobile. Okay, T-Mobile. Awesome. All right, man. Uh, so let me ask you this. You want to sell that phone today? Yeah, that'd be great. Okay. And I'll tell you what, I can do $180 cash for you on that phone. How does that sound? Uh, that sounds pretty good. Okay. And when could you meet? Uh, I can meet in like a half hour. Okay. Half hour. Um, you want to meet at a gas station? Yeah, sure. That would work. Okay, cool. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, how about, yeah, meet me down there in 30 minutes. I'll text you to confirm about 10 minutes before and uh, we can meet there. All right, cool. All right, awesome. Click. Right. So you see how that conversation flowed and there is absolutely no like awkward silence or anything like that and how I kind of just flowed through the whole conversation. Yeah. And talk about the smoothness. Now, I want to know if you guys caught something. So Josh said, ask the customer to rate their phone out of 1 out of 10. Now, I like that, but I'm going to show you how to do it a little bit smoother. When I said, how long have you had the phone? Not only did I just get information on probably what kind of condition the phone is in based on the amount of time that the person's had it, but I didn't have to get specific and make the customer judge their own phone. Because if the thing's a piece of crap, you don't want them to say, yeah, my phone's a two out of 10 and make them feel bad before you even meet up with them. Make sense? Yeah, that does. Josh says, why did you pay so much? Right now, because T-Mobile is worth about $50 more than Carrier Lock to me, even if it's bad ESN. That's why I am willing to pay 180 for an iPhone XR. Sprint right now is the lowest, is the lowest of the low for Carriers. So Sprint's uh, T-Mobile is worth more money. Otherwise, yeah, my, my appraisal probably would have been 150. Um, just just to FYI, too, Will, your appraisal of 150 on a CDMA locked cracked XR, 150 was about right. Um, you know, you're, you're probably going to get around 250 for that phone. And then, you know, after fees, you're probably around like 220. So not bad. Okay. Cool. Um, but does that kind of help you out a little bit? Yeah. Okay. And then one thing I want you to do, cause I, I really want to work for you. Um, you know, you're in my course and everything. And like I've told everybody that signs up for my course, unlimited mentorship. So if you want to post screenshots every day and tag me, you're more than welcome to do that. What I want you to do is when you get on your computer again, post some of those marketplace conversations and label them and kind of keep them in order, post them in the group, tag me, and I will personally respond to you and I'll see what's kind of going on. And maybe everybody else in the group can kind of give you some two cents and just see what we can do to help you close leads. Keep in mind, marketplace, your closing rate might be one out of 10, might be two out of 10, might be three out of 10. Mark, marketplace leads, in my opinion, they're not high quality leads. You will get a lot, but you don't always close everybody you get on there. Yeah. So just keep your head up on that too. It's not always you. Yeah. And then also, I know David K has those uh, rebuttal scripts, you know? Um, yep. I was just wondering, like, could you give me some tips on what to say when they say no to a price? Yeah. Um, what you did actually wasn't, wasn't a bad rebuttal. So basically where you, uh, when I basically said, Oh man, I mean, 150, you know, and I was just kind of, you know, being dramatic over there on camera. 
what you want to do is, is you do want to educate them. I think it's good to educate people. I think that's actually one of the best rebuttals. That's something that I teach is basically if somebody says, oh, 150, man, I paid, I made $400 for this owner. I paid 500. Remind them, you know, it is a really nice phone and everything, you know, don't be mean about it, but just be nice and say, yeah, it is a nice phone, but you know, it is used. It does have a crack in the screen. So keep in mind, I'm going to have to get the screen replaced if I want to sell it for maximum value. And the new iPhone is coming out in November. So if you don't sell it today, it's probably going to be worth less a week from now. So this is my best price. And, you know, I'm trying to do the best that I can for you as far as the phone. I think it's great, but this is just what it's worth. You know, educate them and kind of explain to them why you're paying that price. Don't tell them, like, don't say, well, the phone's old and I'm going to pay 164. That's the best I can do. You got to kind of basically, uh, you know, basically uh, massage people's brains. Uh, you know, there's no other way to say it. you got to kind of coax them into, hey, you should sell the phone because, you know, you are going to get less money if you hold on onto it. And the nice thing about the way that I'm wording this is it's actually not a lie. It's not a fib. It's not a sales tactic. It's 100% true. If you hold on to that cracked iPhone XR and you wait two weeks to sell it, fact is it's going to be worth less two weeks from now because the new iPhone is going to be out. Yeah. And then so, yeah. Also, yeah. Um, so you, I was just wondering, could I get your, uh, your number? I don't think I got that yet. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, message me after the group chat and I'll send it to you. All right, cool. Thanks. Yeah, you bet. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nelson's got his hand raised. What's up? Yeah, man. I mean, it was just about, it was Will. Will was the one you were talking to. When yep, you were yeah, was, doing the example. yep. It was Will. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that um, if he's doing, if he's doing the way he's doing it, pretty much. I mean, Will, can you hear me? Can he talk to or no? Yeah, I can unmute him. Okay. Is yeah, it what, what are you doing? Are you doing like a like a buyback company? Is that what you're doing, or are you doing it like in an organized way, or are you just flipping? Um, I mean, I'm mostly just flipping. Okay. Okay. Yeah, man. I mean, w one thing I would say is the price definitely, definitely. You know, over the phone, you don't want to give a price. You know, just try to maybe, um, I don't know if you ever seen this one strategy Luke talked about where pretty much, I mean, a lot of people, you talk to them on the phone and then they say, you know, they say the phone is like paid off and it's unlocked. And nine times out of 10, when you get there, you know, the phone's always like, it's always like finance or whatever, you know what I mean? And you can use that to actually bring the price down when you actually meet up with them, you know what I mean? Because there's way more of a higher chance of them actually agreeing. But for example, 150, if that's what you're really telling them, is that what you're really telling them for an iPhone XR, like 150? Yeah. Yeah. So that is going to be hard because most of these people are not educated. But, you know, they don't know about iPhones. To them, it's just like, oh, $700 phone, 150. They're going to say no. You know, if you maybe bring the price up a little more, you know, obviously ask for the carrier. You know, don't ask for the IMEI. You know what I mean? Try to run it in person. That's what I that's what I do, and it works. You know what I mean? Because when I used to do it the way where it would be like over the phone, like um, like you know, send me the IMEI, and I'd run it beforehand, and I'd see that the phone was like not paid off. You know, it just wouldn't work the same way as you giving them that same 150 offer in person. Do you know what I, Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah, yeah. You know, when when you say, yeah, so that's what I would say. I'd say try to give them a higher price over the phone, a little higher, not that too crazy, you know, something where where you can actually meet up with them. And then once you actually meet up with them, then, you know, give them that super low price, you know what I mean? That super 150 price, that's, you know, where you're going to make profit, you know. Um, that's it, bro. And I would say keep hustling, you know, and get yourself a little hoopty too, bro, because it's going to be easier for you to get, you know what I mean? A lot of people also, they they want you to come to them. You know what I mean? They want you to come around them. That's also another thing that's going to kind of close close a lot of deals for you, bro. But that that's the only two things I think you should. Yeah. That's it, bro. And you're just, you're, how long have you been doing it for? Um, Tomorrow is my one-year anniversary. Actually. Oh, okay. Okay, well, yeah, bro. That's that's the only two things. Um. I appreciate it, Nelson. Thanks for uh, thanks for giving some feedback on that uh, appraisal call. So, guys, basically, uh, I hope that helps you out a lot. Well, make sure you post those screenshots later. I definitely want to make sure that we're uh, we're getting those in, just because of the fact that I want to be able to check them out and see if we can help you close stuff. 
Uh, Josh says, usually how I do rebuttals is like this. First rejection, no increase on price or very small, five to 10 bucks. And stress cash today, immediate uh, appeal to their impulsiveness and wait until second rejection to increase price. That's not a bad strategy. Uh, the strategy that Nelson was talking about, I call this the pawn shop strategy. If you guys have ever went to a pawn shop, they try and close you. And the reason is people are more susceptible to buy or to sell in person by about 80%. So if you are face to face with someone, 80% chance you're going to close them or sell them on it. So yes, you can use the strategy where basically you don't give them the full price or you give them a price that's good enough where they'll meet up. And then when you meet up in person, you look at this phone, you bring a flashlight with you or you use the flight on your phone and you look at everything and you pick that phone apart. And if you can knock 30 or 40 bucks off, Hey, it's money in your pocket. So keep that in mind too. It's a good strategy. So I hope this helps everybody out tonight. We're coming up on an hour here. Group chats are usually only 30 minutes, but this was our first Monday live group chat. Looks like quite a few people showed up tonight. So even though, you know, it was kind of a drop on the dime last night, uh, we changed Sunday group chats. We're now doing them Mondays at 7 p.m. So it's good to see everybody show up. I think Mondays will be a lot easier for everyone. Just seems like people get busy on Sundays. They're watching football, they're with family, or, you know, they just don't make it around or they're doing a deal or they're just hanging out or doing stuff that they want to do, you know, relaxation time on the weekend uh, or Sunday more or less in the evening. So thanks everybody for showing up to tonight's group chat. We will do another one next Monday at 7 p.m. Central time. You guys can check this replay out on my YouTube channel. They will be posted. So thanks for everybody for showing up. Good group chat and I will see you all next week.